So, hello everyone. Today, we're gonna do a final review for Algebra 1. So, we have number 1. They tell us to evaluate uh, 2m minus 7n divided by m plus n when m is equal to 7 and n is equal to negative 1. Okay? So, we basically have to plug in this value and this value into this equation right here. Okay? So, I'm going to get... 2 times m, 14, minus 7 times negative 1, so plus 7, divided by 7 plus negative 1, 6, okay? And I get 21 over 6. Um, I can try to divide. I can, you know, it doesn't look like anything here, so I'm just going to simplify. I divide by 3, and I get 7, and here I get 2. So it's going to be option D, 7 over 2. All right. Then, number 2, evaluate for x equals negative 1. So same thing. We're just plugging negative 1 in here. So we have negative 1 squared, 1, minus 2x, plus 2, plus 5, and this is 8. Okay? So, hopefully it'll get more complicated. All right. Now we need to simplify this equation. Okay? So the equation is all of this. And we have to simplify it. So we're just, we're first going to multiply here and here. And I'm going to get 3y minus 14 times 5 is 70y. And then 14 times 4 is 52. But I have minus times minus plus. Okay. Uh, sorry, not 52, 56. Okay. And then I have 3y minus 70y. This is minus 67y plus 56. And I look for the one that looks like that. And it's option B. Okay. Moving on. Uh, now, solve the equation 2 thirds of x equals negative 1 over 5. So I, this 3, I'm going to move it to the other side, and it's going to be multiplying. And then the 2 is multiplying here, so on the other side is going to be dividing. So I get x equals this, and this is negative 3 over 10. Okay? So then I get option C. Okay, question 5. Solve the following equation. So again, the equation is this. So I want letters on one side, numbers on another side. So I get 5 over 2y is equal to negative 1 minus 11. So negative 12. And then I want to move the 2 and the 5. So y is going to be equal to negative 12 times 2 divided by 5. And this is negative 24 divided by 5. And I look at my options, A. OK, next. Solve the equation. 4x equals 6x plus 30. Okay, again, this one is the equation. All right, so I move the 6x to the other side. I get negative 2x equals 30. Divide by negative 2, x equals negative 15. Just very straightforward, so negative 15, option B. And watch out with the sign. They give you the positive one, again, just in case you make a slip there. Okay, same thing, solve the equation, just a little bit longer. Um, so first thing is I'm going to expand these two. Okay, so let's see what we get. I'm going to write it down. Mm, yeah, I'll write it down here. So I get 6x plus 30 minus 32 equals 6, and then plus 6x minus 8. Now, I can simplify this a little bit. Um, 
So I have 6x minus 2 equals 6 minus 8. This is negative 2 plus 6x. And then here, I can move things around, and I'm actually going to find that 0 is equal to 0. Okay? So that's what I'm getting. Now, this does not mean that x equals 0. Okay? So this is, this is not true. So 0 equals 0 is going to be all real numbers. Okay? Why? Because, so what that means is that you can plug in any x you want, and you're always going to get 0 equals 0. Okay? That's, so, remember, if you find, it doesn't have to be 0 equals 0. 1 equals 1, 3 equals 3. If you find that, it's all real numbers. Okay? It's not x equals 0. That's, that's the most important thing to keep in mind. Um, okay, keep going. Uh, number eight, Marcus made $21 more than three times Joel, Joel's weekly salary. Okay, so then he made 20. They're basically giving us an equation, but with words. Okay, so $21 more. Okay, that means that it's something plus 21. And then three times Joel's weekly salary. Okay, and then they tell us that X represents Joel's weekly salary. So, okay, so 21 more than three times X. Okay, and this is Marcus's salary. Um, and I look at my options. Okay, so it's 21 plus 3X. Uh, well, actually, B and C. B and C look, look very similar. Um, yeah. I wonder if there's a... I feel like maybe they wanted to write something here because it's 3x plus 21. And it's, it's B. Um, okay, yeah. So, moving on. Number nine. Then they tell us, so the plans for a rectangular deck call for the width to be six feet less than the length, okay? So the width has to be the length minus six, okay? So the width, six feet less than the length. Sam wants the deck to have an overall perimeter of 44 feet. What should the length the length of the deck be? Okay, so what's gonna be the perimeter? We can we can draw it maybe that again. So they tell us that it's a rectangular deck. So it looks like this. And then well if it's a rectangle, then um I'm gonna have width, width, length, length. So my perimeter actually I should get another piece of paper. So the perimeter will be 2L plus 2W. And they tell us that we want the perimeter, the overall perimeter, to be equal to 44. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that we have two unknowns, W and L, and we have two equations. So this is our first equation, and then this is our second one. So we just have a system um, a system of equations. Um, and then we can go ahead and solve this. So from the first one we get L plus W equals, simplifying this is 22, um, and this W I'm gonna plug in here. So I'm gonna get L plus, and then instead of W, L minus six equals 22. And then I just have an equation like from the previous problems. So this is 2L. I move the 6 to the other side. It's going to be adding. So I get 28. Uh, so then L will be 14. Okay, now do they want? They wanted length. So the length is 14. We could have found the width first and then, you know, 
find the length, but in this case, you know, this is what they wanted. All right, so keep going. Uh, number 10. They say, find, find the x and y intercepts of this line. Okay, so this is just the equation of a line. Now, how do I find the x-intercept? Yeah, just in case you forgot, you have a graph. And then you have a line, something like this. So then my x-intercept is going to be when y is equal to 0. Okay, so when y equals 0, I'm at the x-axis. And then when x equals 0, I'm at the y-axis. Okay, so this is x-intercept, this is y-intercept. Okay? So, keeping this in mind, we go to this. So then my x-intercept means y equals 0. Okay, and then I just plug this in here. Okay, so what do I get if y is equal to 0? Well, I get that 3x is equal to 12, which means that x is equal to 4. Okay, um, and then at this point, I would just look at the options and say, okay, so for my x-intercept, x equals 4, y equals 0, and option A is the only one that works. So I wouldn't even keep going. Uh, I mean, I'm, I get you. You could find the y-intercept. Okay, you could go ahead and do it, and it's gonna be this number, you know. But why? I mean, you're doing, you're taking your final. Why waste extra time if this is the only option that that would work? So then you you just stop at that point. Okay, keep going. Number 11. Uh, so they ask, which is the graph of 5x plus 2y equals 10? Now, there are different ways to do this. I would go ahead and find the x the x intercept and the y intercept. Okay, I feel like that's, and then we just check with the graphs that they gave us here. Now, the x intercept. We already know that means y equals 0. And then if I plug y equals 0 here, I get 5x equals 10, which means that x equals 2. So already, I go to my options, and I know that x equals 2, and I look at, and I know that a can be and d can be, okay? So both of these could be. Now, I do my y-intercept. This is x equals 0, so 0 here, and I get 2y equals 10, so then y is equal to 5. And it can be this one because it's a negative number, this is a 5, so then it's option C. Okay? Um, I mean, you, you can also rewrite this equation and find the slope. I don't know if maybe that, I don't know if you see it better that way, but I think that this is the, the most practical way. Then, uh, keep going. Number 12. Find x so that x comes 6 is a solution to 2x plus 3y equals 12. Now, when they write it this way, this 6 is just y. Okay, this is just another way of writing x and y. So we know that y is equal to 6, so we can plug that in. So 2x plus, and then we have 3 times 6, so 18, is equal to 12. So 2x is equal to negative 6. So x is equal to negative 3. Okay, it's just, it's not more, you know, it's not nothing too deep. It's just when they write something like this, Okay, this is just another way of writing x comma y. Um, okay, so keep going. Number 13. Write the equation of a vertical line that goes through the point negative 36, 
27. Okay, now let's think of what a vertical line, let's think a little bit about it. So a vertical line, something like this, is something that's always going to have the same x. Okay, so if I write x equals 2, that means that at 2, I always have this vertical line. So it doesn't matter the y, I always have the same x. Okay, that's the whole point of vertical. So then when they give me this point, all I care about is the x, uh, the x component. So let's say that negative 36 is here, you know, not super up to scale. Then a vertical line that goes through here will always be x equals negative 36. Okay? And then let's say that you didn't know, like, I don't know, you weren't sure. Just by looking at the options, you can deduce this. Um, because if you remember that a vertical line is x equals to something, I mean, because you drew it, so then you know, okay, so it cannot be, uh, so A and B can be. And then D, they're saying that x is equal to the y component. So I feel like just a little bit of logic. It has to be this one. Um, yeah. Now, when they say write the equation of a horizontal line that goes through the point, now this is the opposite. Okay? So when we have a horizontal line, we don't have x equals something. Horizontal means y equals something. So we take a look at our y component. y equals 27. So we always want y to be equal to 27, okay? Make a quick drawing here, just to, okay? So if I say this is 27, it's a horizontal line, and it doesn't matter which x I have, it's always 27, 27, 27. So, uh, option B, okay? Um, and then again, this is just some, for the people that are, at, that are asking, this is a final exam review, Algebra 1. This is just some, some college. Uh, but I have, I mean, I have a bunch of problems. Some are from some high, high schools. It's just stuff that I found online. Um, but this is Algebra 1. Again, I'm not pretending that this is, a, you know, calculus. Okay. Now, we want to find the slope of the line containing these two points. Well, what's the equation of the slope? M will be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay? And I just plug the numbers in. Okay, so I say, okay, this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, this is y2. And... I plug those numbers in. So m will be y2, which is 0, minus uh, y1, which is negative 7, divided by x2, which is 3, minus x1, which is 0. And I just get 7 over 3. which is option A, right? Uh, yeah, so as long as you remember, you know, this is how you find the slope. Um, and then it doesn't matter if you choose this one as point one and this one as point two or vice versa. So you would get the exact same number if you had said x2, y2, x1, y1. Okay, that, that makes no difference. Um, okay, so keep going. Uh, number 16, they say the price in dollars of a gallon of gas for the 10 week period after August 1st can be approximated by the equation. Okay, so they give us this equation where W is the number of weeks after August 1st. Find the P intercept and, and uh, interpret its meaning in the context of this problem. Okay. So, if it makes it easier, let's just think of 
y equals 0 0.03 x plus 1.13. Okay? And then what they want is the y intercept. Again, this is just in case it makes more sense. Now, what is the y intercept? We just did it. So the y intercept is what we get. Again, if we look here, is what we get when x is equal to 0. Okay? So when, let's say, w is equal to 0. So we would get y equals 1.13. Um, okay, so I go to my options, okay, and I see that the only one that has 1.13 is option B, okay? This is the only one, again, just by the number. Now, let's say that we want to interpret its meaning, just to know what we're doing. Well, what does it mean that W is equal to zero? Well, that means that no weeks have gone by since August 1st. So then P, which is the prize in dollars, is the prize when there were like when it was like on August 1st, basically. Okay, so this is just like no weeks gone by. Basically, so the prize on August 1st was 1.13. And that's it. Okay. Uh, keep going. Write an equation of the line with slope 12 that goes through the point negative 1, 4. Okay. So, how do we do this? Um, I would say, like, two ways. Uh, the first way I can think of is, we know that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. Okay, at least in the options that we get, this is more or less what it looks like. Now, we know m, okay? So we know that actually it's going to be y equals 12x plus b. And the b is the only thing that we don't know. Well, if we know x and y, because this is x and this is y, we can just plug those in here, okay? So where I see y, I just say 4, and where I see x, negative 12, and I just solve for b. Okay, so 16 is equal to b. And that's option c. Um, I guess that's not the only... Maybe you could do something else. But I think that I think this is the easiest way, for sure. Um, and then again, because someone just asked, this is an algebra one. Oh, wait. I don't know what it did with that piece of paper. It's an algebra one final review. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know what it did with the first page. But yeah, so it's a it's a review for the algebra one final. Uh, where did I put it? Well, anyways. So, yeah. Uh, A level. No, I, I, I still don't really understand what the A levels are. I mean, I, I know it's like a UK thing, but I, I don't know how to make the equivalence between this and that. Okay, so they tell us solve this system of equations. Okay. So, they give us two equations. Um, again, here they already solved for y. So, I'm just going to go ahead and plug that into the other equation. So, I have 8x plus 3 times and then negative 3x plus 12 equals 35. Again, this is not like the right order. This is just the order, the order that I chose. Um... So this is 8x minus 9x plus 36 equals 35. So this is negative x. I move this to the other side. I get 35 minus 36. So that's negative 1. So x 
is equal to one. So as soon as I find this, I go to my options and I see, okay, so how many of those have x equals one? And I see that it's only a. All right. So since it's only a, I mean, I, I could go ahead and plug x equals one into this equation, find y. Okay, so it would be minus three plus 12 is nine. But as soon as you can like rule out all the other options, it's just you choose that and you move on. Um, okay, so we're doing same thing with this one. Here we're going to say y is 6 minus 5x. And then I'm going to plug that. Yeah, write it up here. So I get negative 20x minus 4. And then where I see the y, I plug this. So 6 minus 5x equals negative 20. And then I have minus 20x minus 24 plus 20x equals negative 20. So here we have a little bit of a problem because this one and this one go away and they get negative 24 equals negative 20. Okay, so I'm just saying one number is equal to a different number and this is just this is not true. So when you see something like this, the answer is there's no solution. Okay, so there's no pair of X and Y's that you can plug in here and you can find something that's true. Okay, you're going to get something like this again. One equals zero, three equals two. It's just all these things that are false. So when that happens, no solution. Um, and then we have uh, yet another one here. Okay, so then here we can do something a little bit different because we have 3x and 3x. So what we can do is take this first equation and subtract the second one. Okay, so we have 3x plus 8y and I'm going to subtract the other one. So 3x minus y, and then I have 15 minus 15. And then again, I could I could have, you know, solved for y, plug it in here, but this is going to be a bit easier. Then 3x with negative 3x go away. I get 9y is equal to 15 minus 15, 0. So y is equal to 0. So then it's just option um, option C. Uh, and then again, since you had 15 here and 15 here, you could, you could have also said right away, oh, then if they're both equal to 15, then they're both equal to each other. So you get 3x minus y. And then this is 9y equals 0. So again, whatever way you choose to do it does, does not matter. It's, yeah. So you get that. And uh, yeah, so this is problem number 20. Keep going. OK, so problem 21. They want us to graph the line containing negative 3 and negative 4 with a slope of 2. So since we have four options, the first thing we need to do is try to rule out the ones that don't make sense. So we know that the slope is 2 which means the slope is positive, okay? So right away, I know that A and B can't be, okay? Because remember, positive is going from left to right. It goes up. And then when it goes from right to left, it's negative. So then these two can't be. So, okay, so I'm between C and D, all right? Um, and then it tells me that it contains negative 3 and negative 4. Okay, so I would imagine, so 1, 2, 3. Okay, yeah. So both have the same point. All right, so how do we check, 
how do we check which one has the right slope? Um, well, if you've been doing this for a little bit, you can probably just tell that it's going to be option D. Um, another way, if you can draw, is you can draw the line y equals x. So this is y equals x. So this has slope 1. And you compare. Because if the slope is 2, then it's even steeper. So if 1 is like this, then this one is steeper. If I draw it here, and it's easy to draw because it's going through, it's like it's splitting all these squares in half. All right, so this is, that's one way to do it. Um, and then the longer way could be, you know that you have y equals mx plus b. In our case, y equals 2x plus b. And then you plug these numbers there. So negative 4 is equal to 2 times x. So this is x, this is y. So 2 times negative 3, so negative 6, plus b. And then you get b is equal to 2. So this is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept here is 1, 2. So is it's this one. Here it's, I don't know, negative 2 point something. Um, and then uh, Alejandro Palacio. So like, this is the slope, la pendiente. This is the slope. It's already 2. So, so then it's option D. Okay. Um, okay. Now they give us the equation already for this one. Okay. So they say graph this. So we do something similar. First thing we take a look at is the slope. Okay. So this is the slope. And I see it's negative. Okay. So option A and option B have positive slopes. Okay, so then if I see that it's negative, it can't be A, it can be B. Okay, so once again, I'm between C and D. Now, what else can I do? Well, remember, MX plus B. What is this negative 1? It's the B. This is the Y-intercept. Um, so then... If this is the y-intercept, I go to my graph, and then I see, oh, okay. So, same y-intercept. Okay, so then I need to try something different. Okay, well, what I can do is just choose another number, okay? So then I see, like, well, you know, let's say, like, what happens when... I don't know, like I'm going to say, like, what happens? Let's find the x-intercept. And then again, at this point, it depends. You can do many things, okay? You can, you can try another number. But let's say x-intercept, so y equals 0. So you would get 0 equals negative 5 over 2. Wait, sorry. So big mosquito okay uh, x minus 1 okay so 5 over 2 x is equal to negative 1 so x is negative 2 over 5 okay and then I, I go and I see well this is x is less than negative 1 so it's negative they're both negative but it has to be less than 1 here it would be 2 negative 2 here it would be you know round 0 0.4 so then it's c again you don't have to you don't have to do it like this uh like um you can go through the graph and then maybe you see like oh you know like here when y is equal to one and then you plug that here so then you say okay so if y equals one then what do i get i get one equals negative five over two x minus one this is negative 5 over 2x equals 2. x equals negative 4 over 5. Okay, so then you know that when y equals 1, you need to have this very small number. When y equals 1 here, you have negative uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
Okay, so I'm, yeah, so it's definitely this one. You, whatever way you like better, you can try both again if you want to be like, you know, if you want to really like be certain that you that you did it right. But that's um, that's it. Okay, and now no more graphs, so we switch gears a little bit. Okay, so for number 23, they ask us, at one store, five pairs of jeans and two sweatshirts cost $208. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. So five jeans and two sweatshirts are 208 And then three pairs of jeans and four sweatshirts, so three jeans plus four sweatshirts cost 178 Find the cost of one sweatshirt. So basically, two unknowns, two equations, solve for, solve for S. Okay, so grab a piece of paper to do this. Okay, so we just have system of equations here. Um, again, different ways to do it. Uh, we can just, um, yeah, let's just solve for one. Um, no, actually, is that the best way to do it? Probably not, but let's just do it that way. It's, it's, yeah. So we get, so we get, um, four sweatshirts is equal to 178 minus... 3J. Okay, no, sorry, 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 sorry. It, it's better if I find, uh, it's better if I find S. Okay. So, 3J is equal to 178 minus 4S. So that means that J is equal to 178 minus 4S divided by 3. Bring that to the other one, so I have 5, 178, minus 4s. Um, and this is getting way too long. So I'm going to take the suggestion of Alejandro, and I'm going to take this first equation, and I'm going to add it to this one times negative 2. Okay? So I have 3j plus 4s, and then plus the left-hand side of the second equation times negative 2. Okay, so negative 10j, negative 4s. And this is equal to 178 plus, and then right-hand side times negative 2. So this is negative 416. Uh, then 4s and negative 4s go away. So this is why I multiplied by negative 2. It's just, if I don't do it this way, then you end up with something like this. You have all these fractions. The numbers get bigger. So it's just easier to do it this way. And then I have negative 7j is equal to, and then I have 178 minus 416 uh, 178 minus 460. I'm capable of doing that in my head, apparently. So this is A, this is 3, this is 2. So then I get negative 238. And then J is 238 divided by 7. So I realized that I didn't care about J. Well, anyways, so 238 divided by 7, this is going to be, what, 34. I go back to one of my equations, and I do, okay, so 5 times 34 plus 2S is equal to 208. So I know that this is 150, 170, 
plus 2s is equal to 208. 2s is equal to 208 minus 170, so 38. S is equal to 19. And great relief when you do all of this, and then you find your option in one of the as, like as one of the options that they give you um yeah so the jeans are 34 the sweatshirts are 19 i hope that made sense okay now we work with exponents so it's slightly different so we have to simplify this um so the numbers negative 7 and 6 those are going to multiply so i'm going to get negative 42 and here I have the axis. Well, if I have a multipli multiplication, it's going to be 4 plus 12. So this is going to be negative 42x to the power of 16. B. Why did you multiply the second equation? Okay. So... Uh, okay, so I multiplied it by negative 2 because I wanted to basically get rid of one of the unknowns. And then I realized that I have a 4 here and I have a 2. So if I multiply this 2 by negative 2 and add it up to this one, I'm going to get 4 plus negative 4, which is exactly what happened. Um, I could have... It just it would have been harder here. I would have had to multiply the 3 by 5 and then the 5 by negative 3 to get like 15 and then minus 15. But it's just a trick to get rid of one of the unknowns. You solve for one and then for the other. Yeah. Uh, okay, so then here, same thing. But now we need to be careful because these exponents are affecting the numbers. Okay, so I get 7 to the power of 2, and then y to the power of 12. Okay, so when you have an exponent of an exponent, they multiply each other. Uh, and then this times 2 to the power of 4, and then y to the power of 32. Okay, so let's rewrite that. This is 49 times 2 to the power of 4 is 16, okay? And then I have y to the power of 12 times y to the power of 32. And like we just did here, we have to add them up. Um, so I have 12 plus 32, so I have 44. I go through my options and it's like okay, 14, no. 384, definitely no. Um, so it's either A or B. And I have 49 times 16. So if I don't have a calculator, I'm not going to, you know, like this is clearly not 14. So you can try to do the multiplication by hand or in a calculator or whatever. But the only one that would make sense is option A. Um, yeah. Okay. Now we're simplifying here. Well, if we have... A division, so x to the power of 8 divided by x to the power of 6, this is just a subtraction, okay? So I get 2, and then this is x to the power of 2, okay? So 8 minus 6. And then, but I have to do x's with x's and y's with y's. That's the important thing. I can't mix x and y's. And then I have y to the power of 8 divided by y to the power of 7. This is just y. All of this to the power of 3. Well, this is going to be 8x to the power of 6. Okay, so 2 times 3. And then y to the power of 3. 1 times 3. And I go through my options, and it's option A. Okay, very, like, it's easy if you remember the properties. So it's very important that you, yeah, that you remember your properties. Um, okay, so then evaluate 2 to the power of negative 4. Very important. When we have a negative, this doesn't mean that we're going to get a negative number, and they do it on purpose, okay? What this means is that you have the inverse 
of 2 to the power of 4. Okay, that's, that's what this negative means, that it's the inverse. And then I just said a 2 to the power of 4 is 16, so this is just 1 over 16. Uh, and then this test is a just a... God, I don't know what I did with the first page. Um, but it's a review for an Algebra 1. Oh, yeah, here it is. So it's a, a review for a final uh, for Algebra 1, basically. And uh, I just from some college. And uh, yeah, so that's the one that we've been doing so far. Uh, 27 questions in. <laughs> All right. So then y to the power of negative 5. Again, the negative just means that you have the inverse. So this is 1 over y to the power of 5. And, I'm well, yeah. That's it. The important thing is never choose an option. Again, no, no negative signs here. Okay, it's just the inverse. All right, again, simplify easy. Again, if we remember our properties, I basically have x to the power of negative 5. Okay, so 2 minus 7 is negative 5. I look at my options, and I don't have really x to the power of negative 5, but I remember that this is just 1 over x to the power of 5. So, b. Um, okay, then here I can simplify right away. So this 7 with this 14, I get a 2. Then I have x to the power of 3. So I have 3 minus 7. So I get x to the negative 4. And then with the y's, I have 8 minus 3. So I get a 5. And all of this is squared. Okay. Um, so what is this going to be? Well, this is going to be 4 x negative 8 y to the power of 10. Okay, so I multiply the two. I look at my options, and it doesn't look quite like this, but I know that this negative 8 is like if I had, this is a 4, y to the power of 10, divided by x to the power of 8. So it's option C. Okay, but then right away, as at this point, I had 2, it was squared, so I know already, okay, so it can't be A, it can't be B, so... Again, you can start to, to just like narrow it down as you go. If if maybe that way you feel more confident, uh, yeah, that that's always a good option. Um. Okay. So we keep going. Okay. So then here, perform the indicated operations. So we have all of this. Okay. Uh. Well, this is just a sum or a subtraction. We just have to group the the right terms with, with each other. Here we have a squared b. Here we have a squared b. So I have negative 4 minus 2, negative 6, a squared b. Then I have a b squared, a b squared. I have 3 minus negative 3. So 3 plus 3. 6. Um, and then let's just do the last one. I have AB, so 1 minus minus 5. So 1 plus 5, 6. 6, AB. And then I look at my options, the only one with 666 six, six is option B. Probably... After I found the second term, I could have just deduced that it was option B, but again, it's it's always better, you know, if, if you find all three of them, then, then you know it's right. Okay, now, multiply, so we're multiplying basically this times all of this in the parentheses. Okay, again, all we have to remember is the properties. So, first I'm going to get negative 15 x squared times x squared x to the power of 4 y to the power of 3 times y y to the power of 4 
Okay. Then I get negative 9 x squared x, x to the power of 3. y to the power of 3, y to the power of 2, y to the power of 5. So at this point, I stop and I look at my options. Okay? And then I realize, for example, here, this second term looks different. It's not b. Here, the first term looks different. It's not this one. Uh, and here, it's a 6, not a 5. This one looks different. So I can just, I can just um, you know, choose D. I could continue to go. You know, I, 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 could do, I could do it four times, but, you know, if I can not do it four times, then it may be better not to do it four times. Um, yeah. So just dot, dot, dot. Okay. Uh, multiply. Okay. So this and this. The important thing is to go in order. Okay. So we're going to do. 10x times all three of them, and then 5 times all three of them. So I get 10x cubed, then minus 20x squared, and then 10x plus 2 plus 20x. All right. And now 5 times all three of them. So plus 5x squared minus 10x plus 10. And now I group all I, I group them all together. Okay, so I have um, 10x to the power of 3, and then minus 20 plus 5, so plus 15, sorry, not plus, minus 15x squared. Already, the only option that has 10x cubed minus 15x squared is option C. I just choose that one. But, okay, I can do uh, plus 20x minus 10x is plus 10x. Again, it is here, and then plus 10. You, you can do it all. It's not super important, but, I mean, as soon as you know, you know. Um, okay, then, multiply, well, I mean, so you just have to, like, expand this. Because you have p plus 11, all of it squared. Okay, so... I mean, if you remember, this is the first one squared plus 2 times first one times second one plus second one squared. And this is p squared plus 22p plus 121. And that's just option C. Okay, so that it's literally a plus b squared. So a squared plus 2ab plus b squared okay it is well i mean this is an algebra class uh again this is a just a, a final exam review for an algebra one uh final so yeah just so we're clear okay now we have to divide uh, this long polynomial by 3x so first thing is i can simplify the numbers Okay, so this 3 goes away, and the 9 will become a 3, 21 will become a 7, 18 will become 6, 6 will become 2. Okay, so then right away, I have 3x to the power of 4 minus 7x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2x. And now I just divide this by x. Well, I mean, I have to subtract 1 to all of these exponents. So, 3x cubed minus 7x squared minus 6x plus 2. And I go through my options. Do, 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 do. Option B. This is the one. And then I, this was an intermediate. You could have done it right away if you see it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you, if you don't see it, then just do it slowly. Okay, then, uh, okay, so factor completely. Well, first of all, we want to get rid of some of these numbers. So we're going to take a 5, 
I'm going to take a 5. And what are we going to get? So we're going to get uh, 10x minus 20y plus xy. No. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Let me get another piece of paper. Small mistake there. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so you take the 5 as a common factor. And you get xy plus 2x minus 4y minus 8. Okay, so we realize we have a 5 in all four of our options. Okay? And we know that we're, we need to get a negative 8. So then when we multiply the numbers that don't have x's and don't have y's, for all of our options, we always get negative 8. Okay, so we need to find another way to, again, see which one, see which one is working. And, I mean, very, very simple. We see that we have, for example, 2x. Okay, so that means that the x cannot be multiplying a negative 2. Because then I would have negative 2x. So then this one doesn't work. Um, okay, then in this one, the x will be multiplying a negative 4, but I have 2x, so wrong. We move on. Here, x is multiplying a 2. Okay, so I do get the 2x. That's good. Okay, let's see what happens with option D. x multiplies a 4, but I have a 2x, so it can't be D. So it's option C. And the same, I could have done the same thing with the Y, okay? Just make sure, okay, so which one is multiplying the Y? Is it negative 4, a 4, a 2, etc.? cetera? Um, I mean, another option is you can expand all of them. You can go in order and eventually get to it. Or you can just look at it, and if you can group it, um, just, again, if you can just know from looking at it, you can also group it that way. Um, okay, so number 37. Uh, so, okay, so we're factoring completely x squared minus 36. So this is the same as x squared minus 6 squared. And then you kind of need to remember that if you have a squared minus b squared, this is a plus b times a minus b. And if you remember this, then, I mean, right away, this is option D. Um, and then, I mean, uh, I guess technically, if you don't know that, you can always double check. But, for example, if you choose this, you would get x squared plus 6x squared plus 2, like, plus 12x. I mean, it would be completely different, so. Uh, okay, then, 38. Which of the following is a factor of this um well you know there are many ways to do this um the way i factor is i i kind of write it like this and then i know that there's a number here and a number here and i know that when i multiply them i need to get a 60 okay and when i add them together i need to get negative 16. So then from that, I would start to deduce, again, whether this, um, which of my options makes sense. So how do you get 60? I mean, many ways, but looking at these options, you can get, you can have something, you can have 10 and 6, okay, plus or minus, or you can have 15 and 4. But then to get negative 16, the only way is to have negative 10 and negative 6. And then you check, okay? So, negative 10 times negative 6, 60. Negative 10 plus negative 6, negative 16. So then I check, and it's option B. Okay? Um, 
another option is you you could use the the big formula you could say okay so y12 will be negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a plug in the numbers dot 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 and eventually you would find that one is 10 and one is six i feel like this is a longer way to go about it so i would not I mean, if you can save yourself the, not only the trouble, but I mean, you know, you're taking the exam, you're nervous, it's just like you're more prone to making mistakes. So it, it may just be better to, yeah, to continue with uh, with this one. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's 38. So keep going. Okay. So we have same problem again. So which of the following is a factor of this? Again, the way I would do it is C times C, and I know that there are two numbers here. Okay? I know that those two numbers, when I multiply them, I need to get negative 96. And when I add them together, I need to get positive 4. Okay? So different ways to get 96 um you could have 12 and 8 okay or you could also have 6 and 16 and of course you know with the signs um but now to get a plus 4 i mean just by looking at the numbers the only way the only combination that you can have is plus 12 negative 8 Okay, because 12 plus negative 8 is going to be plus 4. And again, if you're not convinced, you can try, okay, but what if I have plus 16, negative 6? What if I have a minus 12 plus 8? But this is the only combination that works. That's a good thing. Only one combination works. And then now that I know that, I okay, so which one is yeah, C minus 8? Okay, because this is C minus 12. But the right one is plus 12, so... Only only one correct answer. Um, okay, number 40. Okay, so factor completely this. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some common factors. I can take a 7 as a common factor. Uh, I can take a 7x, actually. And I'm going to get x squared, and then 63 is 9 times 7. So it's going to be 9x. And then 98, just in case you don't see it, 98 is 7 times 14. Okay, so this is 14. And then you can also think of 98 is 49 times 2. Okay, so 7 times 7 times 2. So that you get the 14 from there. Okay, so I look at my options. And, well, no, actually, let's, let's practice this. So how do we factor this expression? Well, I know that I'm going to have x times x equals 0. And then I know there's a number here, there's a number here. So two numbers that when I multiply them, I get 14, 2 and 7. But when I add them, I get negative 9. Oh, negative 2, negative 7. So then my solution has to be 7x times x minus 2 times x minus 7. And go through my options, and it's going to be option C. Okay, so I'm telling you, factoring this way, I feel like it's going to save you a lot of time. Because uh, what we don't want to do is you see something like this, and then you start doing, well, you know, uh, x12 is minus b plus minus b square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. We don't want to do that um, because this is where you make mistakes. When you're nervous, time crunch, honestly, this is this way. I mean, this is the way. This is the way. Um, okay, solve the equation. Well, we can take some common factors. Uh, we can take a 4x that multiplies x plus 8 equals 0. Um, and then the 4, I can get rid of the 4. 
So I have something times something is equal to zero. The only way that that happens, so the only way that if you have something times another thing equals zero is that one of those two things has to be equal to zero, okay? So if you have a times b equals zero, one of these two has to be zero because that's the only way to get a zero from a multiplication. So what that means is that I have two options. My first option is that x equals zero and my second option is that x plus 8 equals 0. Okay, so I'm going to get two solutions. It's a quadratic equation. So then my solutions are going to be 0 and negative 8, which is option D. Okay, 0 and negative 8. Um, you know, because here you just solve this as x equals negative 8. Okay, um, okay, so here we're trying to simplify. Okay, so first thing we can probably divide by three. So this 33 would become an 11 and this would be a 12. So, okay, so I get 12 over 11. And then I have four minus 11. That's a division, right? When we have, um, when we have uh, fractions, no, sorry, when we have um, exponents and they're dividing each other, it's a subtraction. So I get x to the negative 7. Now I look at my options, there's no negative exponent. But I know that this negative just means that it's the inverse. Okay? It's the inverse. And then I can rewrite this like this, if it, if it looks better for you. And you look at the options, and it's option D. Okay? So again, the important thing is that if you have a division, you subtract, okay? So four minus 11, you get the negative seven um, because they give you here 12 and 11, but they give you 15, which is what you would get if you did four plus 11. So um, this is algebra one. So this is, a, this is a final exam review for algebra one. So you know, you can take algebra one in a bunch of grades or in college. So, yeah. All right. Now we have to simplify this. Okay. Um, well, we're going to simplify. First, we're going to factor the numerator. Okay. So we're going to do the thing, the thing we were doing before. So we have y, y. And I know that there are two numbers here. And I know that if I multiply those numbers, I have to get a negative 21, so most likely 7 and 3. And when I add them up, I have to get a plus 4. So how do I mix up 7 and 3 to get this 4? Uh, well, it's going to be plus 7 minus 3. Okay? And then you can you can check that you, that you did it right. And then here I have y squared minus 9. So what is that? That's y squared minus 3 squared. And then what we just did, this is y plus 3 times y minus 3. And this is a coincidence, but not really. Um, this one and this one cancel each other out. And you get y plus 7 divided by y plus 3. Okay? So you need to be able to spot, again, if you have y squared minus 9, you need, it looks like this. a plus b, a minus b. So when you have a 9, uh, 16, 25, 36 that are all squares, um, most likely you... You're dealing with uh, with something like this. Okay, now we have to multiply these two. Uh, well, first, right away, uh, actually, uh, well, yeah, let's do it. Let's do that extra step. Okay, so we just get this 15xy squared. Now, the 60 and the 15, clearly, we that's just a 4. And then I have 5 minus 1. Okay, so 5, 1, so x to the power of 4, 
and then 5 minus 2 is y to the power of 3. And that's just option B. Okay? Uh, at 8. Move on. So here, we have to multiply and simplify. Uh, so we have... Hmm, what can we simplify? Okay, so we can take a 2 out of here, and we can get 2 and then 2x plus 5. And this is x plus 2. And this is dividing 20. And this 2x squared plus 9x plus 10, we need to try to simplify this. Okay? Now, um, the trick that I was doing before, it always has x and x, okay, to get an x squared. But here we have a 2. And with that 2, things get a little bit more complicated. So you can still do that, but I would rather not. Um... So what we're going to do is, uh, da, 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 da. let's see, could 9 over 2, no, I think it's just the safer, safest bet is to, safest bet is just to use the equation. So we're going to get minus b, plus or minus b squared, so that's 81, minus 4 times A times C divided by 2 times A. Let me get negative 9 plus or minus. I have 81 minus 80 over 4. So this is negative 9 plus or minus 1 over 4. So the square root of 1 is just 1. Um, and then I get two solutions, which are negative 10 over 4, so negative 5 over 2, and the other one is negative 8 over 4, which is um, negative 2. Okay. So what do I do with these numbers? I plug them in here, and I have x. So the solution is negative 2, so then I have x plus 2. And then here I have x plus 5 over 2. Okay? So then this one and this one go away. And then it looks it looks like I'm done, but but not quite. Simplify this a little bit, and I get two x plus five divided by ten, and then here I'm going to add these fractions. So I'm going to get two x plus five, but this is divided by two. Well, I mean that's not a problem. This becomes um. Wait, there's an extra 2 that I am forgetting somewhere, because this is 1 over 10. I, why do I have an extra 2? Uh, okay, I missed that too, <laughs> but it's 1 over 10. Um, must have lost it somewhere over here. Uh, we're almost out of time, so no time to step back for it. Keep going. God, so many, but Maybe we can skip this and go to the last ones. What do you guys think? Um... Okay, wait. Let's do let's do one division and then we we move to the to the next one. Okay, so what does it mean? Again, this just looks nasty, but it's it's really not that big of a deal. Um 
the way I think of divisions in general with fractions, I was taught to write them like this. Okay, so all of this by the other one. And then we do, we call it a double C. Okay, so you multiply these two, and then you multiply these two. Okay? And what do we get? We get x squared minus 7x minus 18 times x squared minus 9. And this is x squared minus 12x plus 27. 4x squared plus 8x. Okay, so now I have only one fraction. I did the division part, um, which, yeah, very simple. Now, we need to simplify that because just by looking at the options, I mean, a lot of things need to cancel out. So, well, we go term by term. So this first one, how do we simplify that? We have x, x. And I know that in here there are two numbers. When I multiply them, I get negative 18. When I add them up, I get negative 7. Um, so, this is probably 9 and 2. Okay, so you can try. Uh, again, you could also try with 6 and 3, but you wouldn't get the 7. So you can try different combinations until you see that this is minus 9 plus 2. Keep going. x squared minus 9. We did it a couple of times. This is x minus 3. x plus 3. Okay. Denominator. Again, we have to factor this. So we have two numbers. When we multiply them, we get 27. When we add them up, we get negative 12. Again, you think long and hard. And probably is 9 and 3. Uh, but then to get negative 12, it's negative 9, negative 3. Okay. And then here, you can take 4x as a common factor. And you would end up with x plus 2. And now I factored everything. And I start this one and this one go away. This one and this one go away. This one and this one go away. And I end up with x plus 3 divided by 4x, which is option A. Okay. Um, sorry. Again. Well, you know. We're here. Might as well do it. Uh, okay, so we need to find the least common denominator of these two fractions. Okay? So, basically, an expression for something... Um, an expression for something that we can... So we can take, like, this thing that we're finding... And we can divide it by 12x squared or by 9x to the power of 4 and get something, okay? With, with no decimals, n none of that. Um, so the L for least means that we're trying to get the smallest possible number we can. Um, so we first deal with just with 12 and 9. Okay, just with the numbers, not with the x's. Okay, so 12 is 3. You, you do, um, you decompose the, the 12. And this is 3 times 2 to the power of 2. Okay, so 3 times 4. And 9 is 3 squared. So how do you find the LCD? Well, you take the highest powers and you put them together. So you get 2 squared times 3 squared, which is 4 times 9, 36. So already, 
I know that one of my answers needs to have a 36. So it can be C and it can be D. Okay, and then again, just so it's clear, I decompose the two numbers, 12 and 9. Uh, these are their prime factors. Um, and then you take the highest powers. You put them together. Okay, and then I do the same thing with the exponents, with the 2 and the 4, um, and you would get 4. So then my solution is this. And you can check. You can do 36x to the power of 4 divided by 9x to the power of 4. It's just 4. Um, or, I mean, you can also go like 1 by 1 and just check, can I divide this by this? Can I divide this by this? And you keep going. Um, yeah. But then when you go in order, start with the smallest one. Um, yeah, that would be the best way. Uh, okay. So that was 47. 48. Well, this is just fraction, same denominator. I mean, this is no real science here. This is just 15x plus 7 divided by 9x plus 16. So, um, mm, Super duper straightforward. Um, okay, now for this one, uh, slightly more complicated. So again, when you're subtracting, adding fractions, I don't know if you like doing like this sort of cross product, uh, however you do it, because there are many, many ways to do it. I multiply the denominators. So I get x plus 2, x minus 10. And then here I would get x times, and then I, I don't know how to say without it sounding super complicated, but you take this, you divide by x plus 2, and you multiply. So this is x minus 10. Minus 9, x plus 2. We look at the options, and probably we need to, you know, move this around a little bit. We get x minus 10x minus 9x minus 18. Um, and actually, wait, let's see if we can simplify this. So this is x squared minus 19x minus 18. Okay. So it's looking a lot like it's this one. So then I multiply x plus 2, x minus 10. This is going to be x squared plus 2 minus 10, 8x minus 20. Yeah, so this is x squared minus 8x minus 20. And that's it. So option A. Um, again, for all these problems, there are a bunch of ways to add fractions, to subtract them, to do all of this. So, you know, I want to tell you this is like the right way. This is just the way that I happen to do it. Okay. Problem 50. Solve the formula for Y. Okay. So Y is over here. Let's isolate it. So BY is equal to c minus ax. We may not have numbers. I mean, the rules are the same. And then y is just c minus ax divided by b. Okay, so option d. Nice and easy. Next, simplify square root of 60. Okay. So 60 is 15 times 4. Okay, now why I want that 4 there, because then I can do square root of 15 times square root of 4. This is just properties. And this is going to be 2 square root of 15. Okay, so option A. Very important. Again, they give you here the 4 square root of 15 to pretend like you just take that 4 out of the square root and do nothing, but you, you do have to do something. Okay, so Again, that's why I'm doing these extra steps, just for you to see this is how the 4 becomes a 2. Okay, so you separate it, take the square root. Um, okay, 52. 
simplify the expression, assume the variable represents a positive real number. Okay, so this is the expression. We have the square root of x to the power 14. So a square root is just taking the number and raising it to the power of 1 half. And then you have 14 times 1 half. This is just x to the power of 7. Okay, so option B. Um, okay, 53. Simplify the expression, assume the variable represents a real same idea. Um, so we want to deal with the number and the y separately. Okay, so let's see what happens to, to that 90. Okay, like if I had just square root of 90. Well, 90 is 9 times 10. And this is square root of 9 times square root of 10 which is just 3 square root of 10. Okay, so just by looking at this point, just by looking at my options, I know that it has to be option D. Okay, and we're still going to do, we're still going to deal with the Y, but it has to be option D because it's the only one that has the 3 and then a 10 inside of the square root. Um, but if I have square root of 15, um, square root of y to the power of 15. Well, what is this? Well, this is square root of y times y to the power of 14. Okay, so 1 plus 14, 15. So this is square root of y to the power of 14 times square root of y. But again, <coughs> we had already done it here. If I have square root power of 14, this is y to the power of 7 times square root of y. You put these two together, you get option D. So, but again, as soon as you find this one and you realize that that's the only possible answer, honestly, you just move on. Uh, but I mean, if you have a lot of time left when you're taking the exam, you can, you know, do it and be extra sure. But yeah, I, don't risk it if, if you don't have to. Okay, and now we're here, the last page, okay? The final problems. So simplify the expression, assume blah, 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 blah. Okay, so similar thing to what we were doing before. So we deal with the number first, with the 175. So square root of 175, what can we do with that? They will always give you numbers that are manageable, let's say. And in this case, the super manageable number is this is 25 times 7. Okay, so then this is square root of 25 times square root of 7. So this is 5 square root of 7. Okay, so I look at my options. And I see okay, so the number in the square root is the 7. So a can be in and then D can be it. Okay, these two have 5 and square root of 7. Okay, so we, we have to keep going. Now let's deal with the A. Okay, so square root of A to the power of 17. Well, this is A to the power of 16 times A. And again, these are just extra steps just to so you guys see which properties I'm using, but you can do it probably way faster. This is a to the power of 16 times square root a. And then here you have a to the power of 16 to the power of 1 over 2. And this is a to the power of 8 times the square root of a. And then you go to the only two options that, you know, that you were in between. And here's an 8. Here's a 16. It has to be an 8. So then it's option B. Okay. All right. Then they want you to add problem 55. They want you to add these two square roots. The only way to add square roots is if the number inside the square root is the same. So there's 98. We have to make it another square root of two. 
Um, okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, this is 7 square root of 2 plus, and we need to rewrite that 98 as something, okay? And 98 is 49 plus, sorry, it's 49 times 2. So then this is going to be 7 square root of 2 plus square root of 49 square root of 2 7 square root of 2 plus 7 square root of 2 14 square root of 2 and again extra steps just for you guys to see okay so these are all all the many steps I'm doing in between but you can probably jump I don't know from here directly to the answer um and uh yeah so option c Okay, um, perform the operations and simplify. Okay, so let's see, let's see what we can do with these, with these um, square roots. Okay, so just some piece of paper. Okay, so first let's treat them separately. So square root of 27. So 27 is 9 times 3. Okay, we can start to go a little bit faster now. This is 3 square root of 3. Okay, now, 75. 75 is 25 times 3. This is 5 square root of 3. Okay, so already this square root of 60, probably not it. Um... Okay, let, let's keep going at this point. I mean, this one with a square root of 5, this one's definitely not it. Okay, so we're in between these two. 108. Okay, so how can we rewrite 108? Again, you think about it a little bit, um, and you realize, oh, this is 36 times 3. Okay? 6 square root of 3. So then what they're asking me is 3 square root of 3. But then what they're asking me is 3 square root of 3 minus 5 square root of 3 plus 6 square root of 3. And this is 6 plus 3, 9 minus two problems. Okay, so you've decided to enroll in a local community college as a part-time student, taking fewer than 12 hour credits. Okay, so the cost per credit at your college is this. What is the cost of a fourth four credit hour math class? Well, I mean, yeah, so very simple. So 138.50 times four. Okay, so each credit, I mean, uh, and then you do this, and this is $554. Dollars. Okay, then write an equation to determine the total tuition for a given number of credit hours. Again, just a very fancy way of, you know, what's the relationship between the price and the number of credits. Well, y is going to be, we just did it. This is the price, so 138.50 times the number of credits, x. And that's in. And then complete the following table. So they give you an X, 6, and they want to find the Y. So you just plug. So then this Y is just 138.50 times 6. Okay, so I'm going to cheat and just do it in a calculator. And this is 831. And then if it's 11... This is 138.50 times 11. Again, cheated, calculator in the background. And this is 1523.50. And then for the last one, they give you the tuition. So to find the credit hours, you have to divide 1246.50 
by 138.50. Okay, again, calculator by hand, whatever it is that you prefer, and you get a 9. Okay, and those are the solutions. And now, the final problem, number 58. So, they give us a graph, and they want us to state the slope of the line. Okay, so, different ways to find the slope. I like to use a formula. Okay, so y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, rise over run, whatever you prefer. Um, and I'm going to choose two points. I'm going to choose this one and this one. Okay, so I'm going to call, so my first point, this one, this is um, x is 0 and y is 2. And then this one, x is 1, 2, 3, 4, and y is 0. And then I just plug that in here. Okay. So I'm going to say this is x1, y1, x2, y2, but it doesn't matter. It could be either one. And I'm going to get 0 minus 2 divided by 4 minus 0. And this is negative 1 over 2. OK, so that's part A. That's the slope. Part B. State the x-intercept. Now, I chose these points because I had already read these questions. But the x-intercept, again, is when y equals 0. It's when you're crossing the x-axis. That's just 4, 0. Like, I already chose them. C is the y-intercept. So it's when, you're, when x equals 0. It's here. This is 0, 2. And then the last one, we have to find the equation of the line and write it in this form. Okay? Now, we already have m, right? So our starting point is that y is equal to negative 1 over 2x plus b. Okay? So what we don't know is the b, but we, the rest of the stuff we do know. Okay? Now, what do we do? Well, honestly, easiest way is just take one of these numbers and plug them in. Okay, so any of these numbers, if I plug them in, I need to get the same b. So I'm going to say that y is going to be 2. Okay, so this is plugging in just one point from the graph. And honestly, any point you choose, like it'll give you the same thing. Um, so you're going to get 2 is equal to negative 1 over 2 times 0, so 0 plus b. So b is equal to 2. You bring that in here. y is negative 1 over 2x plus 2. Um, so I will take pictures of all of these. Um, like I'm, I'm going to scan uh, all the solutions, like everything I did, everything I wrote, and I will upload this to our Discord, 